It started with intermittent high fevers, so over 40 degrees, and then going down to normal again. And that happened for like two or three days. And then it somehow evolved into me having difficulties breathing. So I thought it was some kind of pneumonia or, yeah, I don't know. The rheumatologist who finally looked at me and, and could see that I had uh, rashes on my face and heard about the blood test and so on, he, he went into my room and he, he said to my husband, your wife has lupus. And my husband was like, what? But then when we got back to Denmark and I got the lupus diagnosis confirmed, I had a longer conversation with a lupus nurse who explained to me what this would mean for the rest of my life hair loss, fatigue, arthritis, depression, all kinds of different symptoms I had throughout the years, they suddenly made a lot more sense. I had actually applied for a PhD position at the university, but that requires like 60 hours of work every week, <laughs> um, both studying and teaching. And I realized this isn't going to be my future. I'm not going to be able to do that. I was a fitness instructor in my free time. I had power and I was strong and control over my body. And now I, I can't do the most simple exercises. To be able to keep up and do things, I need to do physical therapy. So I have physical therapy three times a week. I have a lot of, I take like 48 different pills every day. Um, so it's, it's really completely different. With a disease like lupus, which is very complicated, it's really important that you become your own expert. And I did that through uh, volunteering for, for the Danish Lupus Association. That was the beginning. A typical day as a lupus advocate, chair of Lupus Europe, I have like two to three online meetings with different organizations where we discuss research or discuss the work that we're doing in the organizations. I go to a meeting a month, which means I, I need to travel a lot with my wheelchair, which is also a, a big challenge sometimes, but uh, also an adventure. You can actually do a lot of things, even if you have this disease. If you know how to protect yourself, how to take the right precautions, uh, rest in between. But going to all of these things, I meet wonderful people. They are like a new family for me. Nothing I ever did made as much sense as what I'm doing today. I've always loved nature and we live in a very beautiful place, so uh, I'm still able to enjoy nature. I think my husband and I, we are a very special example because actually my lupus has brought us closer together. Getting a chronic disease can be very devastating and sometimes you need a bit of support to get through it. And that's very difficult as it is today. We also need to make sure that people have access to good treatments, uh, access to the specialists they need. So we have a lot of different areas where we still need to work. You can have a good life with lupus. It doesn't have to, to mean you can't live a good life. It might potentially mean that you need to change some things, um, depending on the, how your lupus is. But I would be optimistic today. If I got lupus now, I would feel confident.